put in my wonderful students, how are you today? I hope you enjoy yourself and I hope you are practicing all the safety measures by washing your hands, in fact, observing all the safety measures and reading your notes online, making sure you are practicing all the things we ask you to practice by listening to your video tapes. It's very important as well. Happy mommy and daddy. Yeah, or important. As a what students, are you with me? Today we are going to treat the topic titled Maintenance and Care of the Home. Maintenance and Care of the Home. Very important. All right, that is our week eight topic. Maintenance and Care of the Home. Yes, and I want at the end of this topic, each and every one of you will be able to mention the cleaning equipment and tools, types, their uses and care. Do you understand? Then you'll be able to state the cleaning agents and materials, their types, uses, and preparation of simple cleaning agents. Yes. The third one is that you'll be able to set the care of different types of surfaces. You have different types of surfaces in the home. This time, at the end of this class, I will want you to know how to take care of those surfaces in the home. Is that it? Yes. All right. Let us look at the cleaning agents and tools. Cleaning agents or cleaning equipment and tools are designed to simplify work for homemaker. Simple. It makes the work of homemaker very simple. This can be mechanically or electrically operated. Yes, when you have your, your, your washing machine, it is electrically operated, isn't it? But when you are washing with hand, it is manually operated. So also other things that you are using to clean your home. Is that taken? All right. Let us look at other clean. Let us look at the cleaning agent itself and the materials. We have different cleaning agents, and how do we use them? We have. There are many types of cleaning agents and materials. You know, available for cleaning different particle surfaces in the home. We have different of it for the cleaning of surfaces and our articles in the home, isn't it? All right. Now, they include our uh, detergents, our uh, water, our uh, abrasive, our uh, alkalis, acids, bleaches, polish, wax, and so on and so forth. All these are cleaning agents. All right, so number one thing I want you to note is water. Because if you want to clean a stain of oil on your clothes, with, if you apply detergent without applying water, that that will not wash away. Am I lying? So, water is very, very important and it softens the pet or the soil part of the clothes or material to enable any cleaning agent you apply to wash away the soil part. Is that taken? All right, we have grease solvent. This removes dust. Dead, sorry. This removes dirt by liquefying it and holding it in suspense. Do you understand? That is solvent. It removes it by liquefying it and holding it in suspense. That is solvent. We have different solvents. The solvent I said is, number one is water. That is one of the example of solvent, which is what very important. I've told you what water works in the cleaning of all our articles at home. All right, another one is this grease. Grease, now you will classify it. They include the, our tupatin, our paraffin, our methylated spirit, our petrol, and so on and so forth. You know our methylated spirit and our petrol tupatin, they can be used to clean paints. When you notice that paint has spoiled a particular place, you can use them to clean them and some other things like that. Is that taken? All right, let us quickly go to another point. We have soap and synthetic detergents. This can 
emulsify grease and enable it to be washed away along with the dirt itself without taking. Now, if you use soap and you apply it on that dirty plate, you find out that when you wash it, it will wash away because of the, the cleaning agent soap or detergent you have applied in that taking. All right, let's look at another one that we call um, abrasive. Abrasive. This acts by rubbing off or wearing away dirt or salt by friction. Yes, you, you know abrasive. And some of us, some of you that were with us here from just a three, you will notice, you will remember when we did homemade cleaning agent, which comprises of ashes, um, eggshell or snail shell, and detergent mixed together after grinding them. Sometimes they will put broken china wares, which is our towels. When you grind them together, you see them and you get your homemade cleaning agent. You, they are called, this, this uh, homemade cleaning agent is called abrasive because you can use it to clean your, the back of dirty pots. Do you understand? You can easily apply it at the back of that dirty pot, use it to rub it as you are rubbing it. It is adding friction and it's washing away the dirt at the back of that pot. So also you can use it on other items in the home. Is that taken? All right. Now, another one is caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide. Hydro, uh, sodium hydroxide, sorry. Sodium hydroxide. That in that one, this storage, this storage item, which is useful for soap making. It is useful for soap making. Do you understand? You know what caustic soda is. When we talk of soap, caustic, caustic soda is very, very acidic and it's very, very oh, um, it is very, very dangerous. Is that taken? Now, it is under alkali. What is alkali? Alkali combines readily with greasy dirt and so reduces the amount of rubbing, rubbing needed for cleaning. Do you understand? Alkali cleans may, cleaners may, may damage material with an oil base, such as linoleum and paint. Any, any material that has paint on it, like all these tables that we are using to study in the school here, you know they painted some of our table. When you apply alkali on them, it will damage the paint on it. And some paint in our various articles in our home. What, what are the examples of these alkali? We have borex, which is called sodium pyroborex. pyroborex. We have so, uh, caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide. We have ammonia, ammonia. We have washing soda, that is sodium carbonate. All these are examples of alkaline. Okay, let me take them a bit by bit. Borex, sodium pyroborate. Sodium pyroborate. It is mild. This particular acid is mild. It is mild alkaline, which can be used as fine abrasive. You can equally use it as an abrasive because it is mild, though it is not good. Remember, it is not good for any linoleum or paint, painted materials. Is that taken? Now, another one is caustic soda. By the word caustic, you know we're using it in production of our soap. And it is very, very harsh. They use it in production of soap and in dyeing of clothes. So when using them, you have to be very careful. You glove your hands. You make sure you, you strategize yourself. You keep wash so that you do not touch your skin. If it touch this, touches the skin, that part of the skin will be peeled off. Is that taken? All right. Another one is ammonia. Another one is ammonia. We have the ammonia, it is useful in laundry. It emulsifies grease and should not be used on uh, aluminum. Do you hear it now? Ammonia should not be used on aluminum. 
Is that taking? I know our aluminium materials in the home. You should not use ammonia acid on them because it will spoil it or give them a, 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 to change the color of that particular uh, aluminium. Is that taking? Another one is washing soda, which is a sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. This is water softener and green solvent. Are you getting? It is water soft, uh, softener and grease solvent. It is useful for cleaning drains and sinks. Drains and what? Sinks. I know why I'm pointing all these things so that you know what each one is used for. Do you understand? It can be used carefully because it, it can harm wood and metal paints. Are you getting? They can, you use it in the right proportion, use the right proportion of it, and you make sure you use it. They use it in cleaning the drains, that is gutter and um, sinks. Any place that smells, you can apply this there, uh, this uh, uh, washing soda, because they are very, very acidic. Is that taken? All right, let's be moving forward. Another one is acid. Some acid are used as cleaning agents. Some remove tarnished, some remove tarnished from copper. Do you understand? Rust from white fabrics. Lean deposited from flowers and certain household decorative accessories. You can, if you notice, some accessories, if you keep them at home, you will notice that they have started rusting. But what is causing, causing that rust is what we won't be able to explain. So the, the, the cleaning agent like acid can be used to clean, clean them. Is that a, in the mild proportion? Is that taken? All right. Acidic cleaning cleaners include vinegar. We have vinegar, we have lemon and lime juice, we have oxalic acid. All these are acidic um, cleaning agents, vinegar, lemon or lime juice, and oxalic uh, acid. Now, what is vinegar? The work of vinegar, it is useful in laundry for the purpose of reviving color. It is used to revive color of a material of, or of a fabric. Let's say you have a, mat a material that has spreaded or the color is not, is dull. If you add vinegar in water and put that material, the dull part of that color will go off and the brighter color of that uh, material will come out. Is that taking? That is the work of vinegar. Is that as an acid in laundry? Is that clear? Yes. Now let us look at the lemon and lime. Lemon and lime it is useful for cleaning copper and brass. That is where you will now, this one is what you apply in that household uh, material or accessories that is trying, to, that is getting rust. You apply the little quantity of it to wash away the rusted part. Is that taken? All right. Now we have oxalic acid. Oxalic acid, this is very poisonous. Are you listening? It is very, very poisonous and is sold in a crystalline form. It is sold in a crystalline form. It is useful for re removing iron rust. Do you understand? They don't even sell it the way they sell every other material. They sell it in a crystalline form. Just to tell you how acidic, they package it very well and they, they package it and they go on, on keep it for people that knows what it is, how dangerous and poisonous it is. Is that taken? But they are, they are very, very useful in laundry uh, equipment or laundry uh, practices. Is that taken? All right. Now, another one is bleaches, which me and you, we are using. We are very, very familiar with that one. These are most commonly used in the home and are those in the uh, chlorine, chlorine and sodium, Parbo, high, parborate, parborate group. 
they are there, they are in the group, it is in the group. Do you understand? We use it in washing our white materials, isn't it? Use it in washing our cotton materials and the rest. Isn't it? We use our bleaches in wash and dirty cotton materials or any white material that we think, oh, it's no longer uh, bright enough. We apply it to bring out the color. Is that a thing? Another one is waxes. Waxes, we all know wax is the one we, we use in, product, in the production of our by clean, our rub, and so on and so forth. All right. The, there are different forms and brand of waxes. They are used to protect surfaces. Is that a thing? They are used to protect surfaces and to improve their appearance. You can apply wax on a, on a surface in order to use it to protect it, not to spoil easily. And you can equally apply it to, to improve it. Is that a thing? All right, let's be going down. As we look at the care of the wood, now let us look at how we can care for wood. Wood is very, uh, it is used extensively in the home. You can use the wood for your kitchen shelf, for your chair, and so on and so forth. Do you understand? Wood is used extensively in the home for building the house and for furniture. Wood contains a great deal of water. Do you know when they cut wood from the tree, if they cut the, the tree, uh, tree for the first time, it must have water in it. Do you understand? So in the process, you need to drain the water. And the process of draining the water is what we call seasoning. Look at it here, we call it seasoning. The process of draining out the water in the wood is called seasoning. Yes, that is the process of drying out, removing the moist, moist and, uh, from the wood by drying it. You can dry it under the sun, so dry it under the solar system, and so on and so forth. We call it what? Seasoning. Is that taken? All right. Now we have guidelines for the care of plain wood. How do you care for your plain wood? Avoid splitting things that can stay on the plain wood, such as ink. Some of us will use our pen, your, our pen ink, and use it to splash on our table. When you look at it, it will look so ugly. It is not good. Avoid splashing things that like ink and things that can stain it because it will not, it will be very difficult to remove. Is that taken? All right. You clean by washing with clothes and soapy water. Try with clothes, uh, uh, clean clothes. Do you understand? If you want to clean it, you dump, dump your clothes in the soapy water before you now clean your table so that it will look fine or your chair or your uh, wood. Are you getting so that they look neat again? Do you understand? If the surface is very dirty, scrub with brush or sponge using warm soapy water. Don't use iron brush or iron soap, iron sponge, sorry. Do you understand? Use mild brush or sponge. Is that taking? All right. Now, follow the natural grain of the wood. Follow the natural grain of the wood. Now, you know you have a wood has line by line. If you look at it here, look at the one at my back here. If you look, the, naturally it has its line by line. So you follow it if it is the one that you need to clean. Clean it the way it looks so that it will maintain the, the look. Are you getting and the beauty? Okay, scrub a little portion at a time. Rinse with clean water and dry. As you are scrubbing, make sure you, you rinse your clothes and you dry the water immediately because wood and water, they are not good friends. Is that a thing? All right, use a little water as possible in washing or scrubbing plain wood. Excessive water softens the surfaces. That is what I'm saying. If you use excessive water, the surface will be softened. Is that taken? So wood and water, they are not good friends. So you use little water at a time. And as you are using it, you make sure you drain the, your clothes very well before you now apply it on another one. Is that taken? 
All right, let us look at concrete surfaces. What do I mean by concrete surfaces? All the our cement surfaces, our terrazzo surfaces, all those ones. Concrete surfaces is mainly meant of cement. Do you understand? Concrete surfaces and, and floor are common in homes. Of course, we have floors, different floors. Here I'm teaching, you have the one in uh, called terrazzo floor in your school. In our school here, we have a uh, tile floor. We even have concrete floor. Do you understand? We have a marble floor. We have all those things in our school here. So unfortunately that we are not here, so I will see, but you'll be seeing it around your vicinity there. Is that taken? All right, concrete surfaces and floor are common in homes. These can be plain or painted. Yes, do you know that cement floor can be painted? It can be painted, though it's not common these days. Yes, cleaning of plain concrete or cement surfaces and floor. How do you clean them? Sweep the surfaces with a broom and brush or brush first. In first of all, sweep to sweep up the dust and the sand first. Do you understand? You now scrub with one soapy water and scrubbing brush. Are you getting? You can use your scrubbing brush. You can use your soapy so one soapy water uh, more with one soapy water as you are mopping them. Is that taking? Take small portion at a time, not that you want to scrub everything at a time. No, you scrub at a one part, you push the, the, uh, the, the things that were there, you arrange them well, you go to another place. That is how to scrub. Is that taken? Wipe off this dirty water and rinse with clean water. Rub out in clean water. You make sure you are using more when you use your dirty water in cleaning the first one. Please rinse it in a uh, clean one. You run the squeeze out the water very well before you now use it to dry off the floor very properly to avoid home accidents. Is that taking? All right. Now dry thoroughly. Is that taking? You dry them thoroughly. Let us look at how you care for plastic or vinyl towels. Well, which one do you call plastic or vinyl towels? Some of us, you see towels, some towels. And you use gum in holding on the floor. We call it vinyl towels. They are very good as well. How do you clean them? You clean them with one soapy water and a floor clothes. You know, there's these clothes we call floor clothes. You maybe you call some you call it rag, some call it a, some use mop as well. Use it. You run out the excessive water. You make sure you clean it very well. Now. Clean a small portion at a time, as I told you. Any cleaning you are you want to do, make sure you clean a small portion at a time. Now, avoid pouring water on the floor as this may absorb under the towels. And if it absorbs under the towel, what will happen? It, it will um, uh, cause the gum that is used to gum it on the floor. The gum will be weak and the to remove. Is that taken? The thing will be pulling off. That is why you don't need to, uh, uh, too much water to clean it. Is that taking? Mm -hmm. So, as you are cleaning your vial towels, please avoid using excessive water in cleaning now, so that the gum or glue used to stick the towel to the floor surface can become cannot cannot lose. Is that taking? Because if you add excessive water. Can become loose and the towel will come off. Do you understand? The, count, the towels will be pulling off. That is the consequences. Now, the floor surface can be polished. You can polish it the way you want. Do you understand? You can polish it to make it shine. Do you understand? By using floor polish to polish it. Another one is if water spills on the floor. It should be wiped off immediately with clean water. Why? Why will you do that? So that there won't be home accidents. Is that clear? Now, let us look at another one. Care of window and door glass surface. Do you understand? How do you care for a window? This one is very, very, in fact, it's very, very important to you because if you go to so many homes today, you find out that their homes, their windows, their glasses is nothing to write to her. Wow! If you should clean it, 
and you be, if you look at it, you, you feel like crying. It's not everybody that knows how to take care of it. Then, now, let us study on how to take care of it. The following are the procedures. Look at the procedures of how to take care of your specific glass articles. Remove loose article dead. Start to use broom or dirty or, or dry cloths to remove all the particles from the maybe dust. Use it to dust it or paste. You don't add water on those dirty uh, particles on the, on the, the glass. It is not done. If you do that, the glass will look so dull. You remove all the dust or the particles on the, the glass. Do you understand? Use, you can use your soft cloth or paper or even broom, soft broom. Is that taken? Now, you wash with lintless or non-fluffy cloth that has been rubbed out as dry as possible. You make sure that the cloth you are using, you dry it very well. There has no water at all. You use the lintless uh, uh, material to clean them. Is that taken? So that they will shine up again. Is that clear? All right. Now, after washing, after washing, dry the glass with clean, soft, dry, lintless clothes. When you, you are done washing, please dry it with dry clothes that is very, very dry. The one you have not dipped in, in the water, you dry it with that dry clothes. Is that clear? All right, wipe dry after each soap. When you are done cleaning like this, then you wipe it dry. Wipe your clothes or your, your, your material you are using, fluffy clothes. You dry it very well. Strokes should be made in straight line, just like this. The cleaning is like this, in a straight line, rather than in armless circle. It is wrong. Don't clean like this. Rather, you clean right like this, so that all the dates will, will go up. Because when you are doing like this, you are rubbing off the, you are rubbing the dates. You are suckling. You are just expanding the dates on the surface of the glass. Is that it? All right. The the dry glass can also be polished by rubbing with faded newspaper or tissue paper. Dip lightly in kerosene. Do you know you can get your tissue paper or painted newspaper? Dip it in there, kerosene, use it to rub on the surface of the glass to make it shine. That's taking. That is how you make the glass, your glass material to shine. And that is how you take care of it. That's taking. All right. How do we now take care of marble surfaces? Don't be tired. It, this topic is very, very important to make you a good homemaker. Do you understand? To clean, uh, to clean unpolished marble, dust, dust the dust with a clean, soft cloth. Dust with what? A clean, soft uh, cloth to remove surface dust definitely you will dust it isn't it hey you dust your clean so you dust it with a clean soft uh, cloth to remove the uh, surface dust and you scrub with non-abrasive material very important don't use abrasive material that is the one that has a, a sharp seat sharp surfaces no don't use it now another thing you have to do is to do what to make sure you scrub it with soapy water dip it and rinse thoroughly dry with lintless clothes uh, clean clothes it is very very important hmm? now to clean polished uh, material or polished material marbles or polished mar marble materials you scrub with damp clothes lintless Clothes, you can use damp clothes, lintless clothes, rubbed out with soapy, flat solution, not synthetic detergent. Do you understand? You don't, in this one, you don't use synthetic detergent. That's a detergent that is very harsh. 
Is that taken? Use mild detergent like our liquid soap. Is that taken? Now, use alcohol, alcohol or acetone or any dry cleaning fluid to remove stain if there's any stain there. Is that taken? Now, marble floor should be rich coloring with water to remove any trace of soap. Otherwise, if soap remain on the on soapy marble floor, then it could become slippery, very, very slippery. You know, marble floor, they used to shine. So if you leave uh, any kind of soap or water, soapy particle on it, it can slip someone. Is that taking? So you have to be very careful of that. Now, how do you take care of terrazzo floor? Terrazzo floor, we have terrazzo floor as tiles that are made from mixture of marble and concrete, and it is excellent wear. It's very, very fine, very good. Then, how do you take care of it? To sweep with a soft broom and brush. You can use it with a soft broom or brush to sweep them to remove surface dust. Then, you scrub with warm synthetic detergent water. Do you understand? Don't use uh, detergent as a pure detergent. Use you use the you don't use the mild detergent. Use you can use strong detergent on, on this. Do you understand? In order to remove the dirt properly. Is that clear? Rinse thoroughly after washing. That is after scrubbing. You rinse it thoroughly. You dry with well rubbed or lengthless cloth. Are you getting? If scrubbing is not necessary, wash with a, a sponge mop. You can use your mop. If you know that you don't need to wash it, please use your mop. It will serve the purpose. Is that okay? Now, I believe with all this, you are you are you were able to achieve a learning objective of today. We say that you'll be able, you know, you at the end of this class, you'll be able to mention the cleaning equipment two styles and their uses and the cares. And you state the cleaning agents and materials, types, uses and care. And, uh, and at the same time, you will be able to care, mention the care of different types of surfaces, how you can care for them. I believe you have achieved this. Yes. And I hope you enjoy this lesson. With this, I'll say bye for now. I would wish to have you again in my next class, please don't be tired. It is not over until it's over. Is that taking? I still remain your teacher, Mrs. Oduma Vivian, your home management teacher. And I wish you best of luck in your forthcoming examination. That is your promotional examination. Yes, I love you all and keep practicing your safety measures. Don't relent. Is that taking? Bye for now. And God bless you. Remember to help mommy and daddy and remind them of your uh, online pay. It's very, very important so that you will not, you will not be caught short. Is that a game? All right. Love you all. And I miss you so much. Bye for now. Love you.